Hi, everybody. It's Monday night, live Q&A. It's my pleasure to join you here this evening. I'm here to answer your questions, help you get on that path to health, and get you summer ready, because those summer bodies are built now. So now is the time to jump on the bandwagon if you're not already taking care of yourself. Spring is just two days away officially. Um, for those of us in the Northeast, we got a little taste of some warmer weather. It's kind of retreated a little bit, but it's starting to come back. And now's a time to remember that, you know, these turtlenecks and layers are going to start disappearing and we're going to start shedding the layers. And in shedding layers, we want to start shedding those layers of body fat, right? It's the excess body fat that's covering up all our beautiful muscles. And it's what creates a lot of our dishealth is just too much body fat. So I always joke that um, there are no hidden fees. With, you know, what you pay is what you pay. But um, there's always that hidden fee of wanting the new wardrobe as you start to feel better about yourself. So you may have a whole closet full of uh, the old clothing size you want to get into. But let's be honest, we all want some new things. And especially when we're feeling great about ourselves, um, we want to have that new wardrobe to, wait, to show off. And seriously, and I do say this quite seriously. I mean, I, I like to joke a lot um, because, as I say, people remember what makes them laugh. So as we're training you how to do your beads, you know, little tips about the program, there's nothing like a good chuckle because, again, the things that make you laugh are the things you remember. But in all seriousness, it is, even though obviously we want to lose weight, it's not really about the scale. Ultimately, this is about losing the body fat and transforming your body by losing the extra volume that's making us too large, right? Um, body fat is like the least dense substance in our body. So as we lose the body fat, we're not necessarily losing that much weight on the scale. It's not about the scale. As I like to say, it's all about the fashion. Our clothes don't lie to us. If something didn't fit last week and it fits today, you did that work, right? That's the body fat. You know, I have to always share my favorite toy. Um, that is one pound of body fat. Now, obviously, we don't lose it in a lump like this. Hi, Marlene. Welcome. We don't lose it in a lump like this. We're losing it a little bit from many different places. And again, it's just below the skin level between our skin and our muscle are the extra layers of fat. So we're burning out the sugar in these fat cells. This is volume. This is just one pound. This is just one pound of fat. We're promising 15 pounds of body fat every month. But most importantly, even if the scale, if you're retaining some water, there was a lot of chatter on the secret group this week about the scale not moving as anticipated. And the real question is not as much did the scale move. There are a lot of mitigating factors on the scale, but did the way you feel, the way your clothes fit, did that change? Um, look, if we've taken in a lot of sodium, if we're women, if it's that time of the month or even mid-month and the hormones are surging, we might be retaining some fluid. We're going through all these weather changes. And regardless of what region you're in, everywhere, I hear that the weather patterns have been erratic and that they're not typical. And those lack of patterns often cause water retention. Our body just doesn't know how to metabolize the unseasonal and erratic changes going around with us. And so that does mean our mineral balance can be off, our hydration balance can be off. And when our, that's going on, our body will retain fluid. It's the protection mechanism. If it's going to get warm out, our body says, ooh, I better carry some water so I can perspire without dehydrating. So the body does, you know, do things to protect itself. And water has a big impact to the scale. So remember, this is one pound of fat. And here's my handy-dandy one-liter bottle of water. And that one liter bottle of water weighs 2.2 pounds. So, you know, I mean, comparatively speaking, this is two pounds, this is one pound. Now, yeah, this is bigger, but I can fit kind of, right? I can fit a lot of this in here 
and um, more space just takes up more space this is denser this takes up more space doesn't weigh as much this is less dense this is more dense weighs more weighs less relatively speaking obviously a pound is a pound right one pound on the scale is one pound but if it takes up less space you're going to lose inches and that's why people come in and they say okay yeah you know my scale didn't move much this week but I, oh my gosh i'm wearing a skirt that i couldn't fit into two weeks ago like that's what it's about is feeling healthier getting healthier and your clothes fitting right we want to wake up every day i was talking to a client earlier today the scale was a little slow but she's definitely retaining some fluid but she said she's wearing a skirt she couldn't put on last week another client here earlier today she's buttoning a jacket that she couldn't wear and she was thrilled to have that jacket back in her wardrobe it was gorgeous so i love the fashion shows that i get hi dorothy welcome um and donna welcome as well um you know, that's what, you know, when we can go shopping in our own wardrobe and get back some of our favorite pieces, and not only should they fit, but they fit comfortably. We feel good about ourselves, right? When you walk out your front door, just remember, nobody knows what you weigh. I mean, you know if you weighed yourself. But does everybody see how you look? Does everybody see how you feel? People see how you carry yourself. If you're feeling good, when you got dressed and you went into your closet and you pulled out your favorite dress and you put it on and you walked out your front door, you're walking taller. You're walking with confidence. You feel great. That emanates from you. That's what people see. I don't think most people walk around going, hmm. I think she weighs 150 or I think she weighs 220 nobody's thinking about what you weigh but they do see how you look they do see how you feel about yourself so so much of this journey is again about reconnecting with your health reconnecting with your body and finding that place of self-love I like to say to people, especially new clients or prospective clients that I'm talking to, I am not in the business of making stick figures. Acu weight loss is not in the business of making stick figures. The whole purpose of weight loss, and again, of fat loss, is to help you be healthier, help you feel good. Every one pound that you lose is five pounds of pressure off your knee. I had a client come back today, I haven't seen in a while, she's been traveling, and she hurt her foot a while ago, and that actually was one of the things that took her out of the game. And she couldn't walk, she couldn't get here, she, you know, and she'd been traveling. And she came in today and said, you know, my foot is hurting again, and i got to de deal with this weight. I'm not helping my foot by walking around with all this extra weight I'm carrying. You know, I had somebody who, she's got a way to go, but as of today, she's down 27 pounds. And I looked at her and said, you realize? That is the average weight of a carry-on suitcase that you are no longer carrying around with you. Another new client who was here today, um, two weeks in. Hi, Emery. Um, two weeks in, and she's down 10 pounds. And she's feeling good. And, and I want to bring up some of the things she and I talked about today. I thought it was very poignant, and I thought it was a good topic for us to talk about tonight. But, you know, I looked at her right before she left and said, just to give you perspective, 10 pounds. That's two sacks of potatoes you're no longer carrying around in just two weeks. And, uh, you know, she looked at me and said, oh, I needed to hear that. Thank you. Um, so just, again, give perspective. What clothing size do you want to be? When you think about your body, when you think about the time you felt the best in life, that you felt happy getting dressed in the morning and maybe you haven't been there in years or maybe there's no time you can really think of but we all have a picture in our head of what we want to look like and how we want to feel that's our health goal let's get into that wardrobe let's get into that way of feeling let's get rid of extra aches and pains let's help reduce the knee pain let's help reduce the inflammation let's help 
our body feel like moving better, right? Let's feel good. It's all about feeling energetic, feeling great, feeling strong, feeling excited, feeling confident, feeling self-love. Sound like my father's daughter now, but it really, oh, so much of our program is about reconnecting to you and relearning that self-love, right? Taking care of ourselves. And I parallel it and they tell you before you take off, God forbid those masks come down. You put yours on first because if you can't breathe, you cannot help anyone around you. So reality, we are all caught up in taking care of everybody else. And, and honestly, I'm in there too, right? I'm a single mom. Um, all of you, you're my Accuate family. Nothing more important other than my daughter and my family than being here and helping take care of all of you. It's what satisfies me every day. I was talking to a client earlier who's having a challenge, and we haven't figured out what's going on with her. But I said, you know, I'm a puzzle solver. Personally, I can't go to sleep at night until we solve this challenge. Like, I will not give up until we find an answer. Because there's always an answer. We just haven't found it yet. Like, we take these on as personal challenges. That's who we are because we are here to help you. So, you know, when you are facing those challenges, don't be shy. It's our pleasure. We are here to help. It actually gives us personal joy when we can make that difference and help you. So, you know, don't ever be shy with your questions. Um, we are here to help, and we're here to make a difference for you. So if something's not feeling right, um, or you are experiencing personal challenges, bring it on. We're here to help. So what I wanted to talk about a little today, and, and it's one of the things this new client and I were talking about when she came in today, is she actually lives out in um, outer Long Island, but she decided she wants to come into office. So she's coming in once every two weeks, and I'm putting on two sets of beads on her each time she visits to save her a trip in. And we're doing our in-between visits on the phone. And um, so today was her second, you know, it was her, her starting day, and I spoke to her last week, but it was her first weigh-in since starting. And again, as I mentioned, she's down 10 pounds, and she's overall, she's doing great. So I said to her, you know, we spoke a week ago, things were going great, and I haven't heard from you this week, really. Um, she sent a couple questions that were more, can I have this, you know, the typical, um, does this destroy the chemistry, can I have this on a milk day, various questions. But we hadn't really talked about what was happening. So I said to her, so tell me about your two weeks. You know more about week one. Tell me about week two. She said it didn't go as well. Okay, that happens sometimes. Usually I find week two is simpler. But tell me what happened, what was different. And she said, you know, it was the social engagements. In week one, I didn't have a lot going on. And in week two, we went out a lot. And I found it really challenging to be out with people and be challenged by them. They didn't seem to be very supportive. And when she really thought about it, she said, you know, I was actually at one meal, I was sitting next to this woman who is quite thin. And she said, I believe based on talking to her and listening to her that she has a bit of an eating disorder. So she's really thin, but I don't think it's in a healthy way. She said, but I realized she was out to sabotage me. Like my success if I was doing well at this, it made her feel bad. And I didn't know how to deal with it. And so I had a cocktail, I wound up eating, and then I felt bad about myself. And once I went off, it kind of kept going, and I really didn't know what to do. And so I said, first thing, and, and I'm going to go to this new languaging that my father and I, you know, really goes back to, again, my father, Dr. Schwartz, he's a brilliant psychologist. He's retired, and he's brought his brilliance to all of you. And what we recognize is you're not failing, and you didn't cheat. We all have that inner child that we're always talking about. And remember, he or she is just three to five years old. They don't understand consequences, and they want to make you happy. 
right? What do children want? They just want joy, fun, and happiness. And they don't understand consequences. They want what they want when they want it. But they also want us to have fun. But if you think about the behavior of a child, when a child doesn't feel safe and secure, if they don't feel loved, they start acting out. If they're not having your attention, if something's making them feel unsafe, they act out in search of the safety of boundaries and borders and rules that help them understand where they can be safe. They will always push the limits to understand it, but when they have boundaries, when they understand what those boundaries are and they're clear and they're firm, they feel safe, secure, and loved, and that acting out subsides, right? So think about a child when, how often, if you have children or if you don't, if your friends have children, when a kid is young, especially when they're young, and they're behaving beautifully, and then the phone rings, and now mom or dad is on the phone. Instantaneously, somehow, the need is now, and they start acting out. Why? They're being ignored. Mommy or daddy is giving their attention to someone else. So now they're acting out. Well, just because we can't see that inner child doesn't mean they're not there. And the behavior of our inner child is the same as an external child. So now we go out to dinner with people and we're put in a situation that if we're not prepared to have conversation, if we feel cornered, if people are asking us questions and we don't feel comfortable answering it, our inner child is going to act out because they don't feel safe and secure. And if you are feeling insecure as the adult, now that child doesn't feel the safety and the love, right? So if you don't feel safe and loved, you're going to act out. So you're not cheating. Forgive yourself. Recognize that something is going on that is either making you feel insecure or safe or unsafe or unloved. And you're looking for safe boundaries and the recognition of love so that you can focus and be on your path. Your inner child is going to act out when those elements are missing. So what we talked about was, you know, again, new into the diet, it's unusual. Oh, if you're only drinking milk or you're only doing this or you can't eat after six. If it is not an environment where people are welcoming to the unusual thing that you're doing and you know you're here because this works and it's healthy and it's fast and it gives you results and it's healthy, but not everybody understands that. Simple changes of language or going in prepared is all it takes. So what she and I talked about today is I said, so okay, you're sitting at dinner and you're not having what everybody else is having. So what's wrong with saying, let's not even talk about weight loss. Again, let's go back to why we're really doing this which is health. One of the wonderful byproducts is we're getting thinner, we're getting healthier in our body and our shape. But what are we doing? We're on a path to health. So, okay, I am currently on an elimination diet to find out what are, is causing some of my pain and dishealth. There are things when I eat, I don't feel good. So I'm on a temporary elimination diet to take things out of my diet, reset my digestive system, and give me a safe platform to reintroduce foods and find out what foods are creating dishealth in my body. I know my body's been reacting things. So it's temporary, and I'm fine with it. You keep eating, it's not a problem. I am currently not eating what you're eating because I need to do this for my health. That's a simple answer, and it's not talking about I'm detoxing. It's a detox, right? Again, I'm on a special diet for my health. It all comes back to your health. Nobody can argue if you're talking about your health. Why aren't you drinking alcohol? You don't want to talk about it. You can even just say, you know what? 
I'm currently taking, you know, again, sometimes I say I don't love lying, but sometimes a little white lie gets you past um, difficult and kind of confrontational situations. I took some allergy medicine earlier today, and I can't drink alcohol with it. It makes me loopy, so I'm gonna avoid. I'm gonna avoid the drinking tonight. Or you know what? I just don't feel like it this evening, and and I have no issue if you're having. It's totally fine. I'm gonna stick with a cup of tea. Um, when I was on this and I had a business dinner, I didn't want to talk about weight loss, dieting, or a change of diet. I wanted to stay focused on on the business meeting. Again, I was in my old career in finance. A little white lie. I said I had an upset stomach earlier today. Feeling fine, but it's not worth risking it at dinner here this evening. So I'm going to stick with a cup of tea. I didn't want to cancel our dinner because I feel fine. Everybody's had an upset stomach sometime in their life. If you're at dinner, nobody wants the details. And what would you really be drinking if you had an upset stomach? Probably a cup of tea, some water or sparkling water. If you drink Diet Coke, something like that, that settles the stomach or ginger, you know, you could have a diet ginger ale. Um, all of these are things are in line with the behaviors in line with the story. It just eliminates the conversation and then you can move on to the, to the business at hand and enjoy your evening. Other thing, and again, we've talked about it before, but, you know, sometimes things get lost in the shuffle. Again, if you're going out, great thing to use is a little bit of peppermint oil. You can just dab a little on your finger. One pass across the nostrils. Again, any brand you want to get something that's food grade um, that you can use. And just very gently dab it because um, oil, it's very highly concentrated. You don't want to do too much. It'll feel like it's burning. And you can end by dabbing a little bit on your tongue. So now if you do that before you walk into any room with aroma, before someone at home is cooking, or before you're cooking for other people, or if you're cooking for yourself on a milk day and you're cooking your veggie day stuff and you, you don't want the temptation, um, again, a little bit of peppermint oil. And now you have the aroma of peppermint, and it's gonna mitigate the aromas of everything else. So now you're not gonna smell it. If you don't smell it, you don't salivate. If you don't salivate, you don't crave. Visually, we are tempted by food, but it's really the aroma that gets us. So if you think of like when you have a nose cold, somebody can put your favorite foods in front of you, but if you can't smell it, you're like, eh, yeah, you can walk away from it. It makes it much, much simpler. So peppermint oil, and again, a dab on your tongue. That little dab on your tongue, it's like having just brushed your teeth. When you have the taste of mint in your mouth, nothing tastes good. So it'll help you prevent any absent-minded picking. Um, other thing that we were talking about today um, was your taste buds. Um, our taste buds are on our tongue, right? That's where my taste buds are. And we think about wanting food, missing food, Yet we're busy wolfing down our food. If we're not tasting it, we're not genuinely enjoying it. And then we're eating for a whole different set of reasons that we probably haven't acknowledged yet. So remember, the taste buds are on the tongue. And one of the beautiful things is, you know, just over time, our taste buds, we build up like a coating on our tongue. We're not really tasting purely anymore. And... Um, Again, this young lady was saying to me, wow, you know, the milk tasted so good. And my vegetables, and I said, yeah, because two weeks in, okay, you had a little stray, you, your inner child acted out a little, but you pretty much, I mean, 10 pounds down, you followed the program. Your body's been detoxing. You cleaned off your taste buds. You can actually taste your food now. And when your taste buds have been cleaned off, it's like muted colors all of a sudden are vibrant colors. you got the vibrant taste of all your food. How wonderful. Then you can really connect and enjoy it. That's awesome. That's what it's all about, right? We're going to eat. It tastes good. Um, so there's so many wonderful things that you can enjoy. If you haven't connected, try something else. You know what your favorite flavors are. And if you need some assistance, reach out to us. Let us know what your favorite foods are and let us help you find things to connect to. Um, again, some people love sweets. So on a milk day, having a milkshake or you know, having a chocolate pudding, 
that's great, but people who aren't into sweets and like savory, well, there's a lot more cropping up. People are using a lot of different seasonings, um, especially we've got so many clients from different cultures. There's so many seasonings and spices, which I was never exposed to before, which are coming up from our various clients who are coming from different backgrounds. So there's a lot of really savory options now. And then it sometimes it's just about experimenting. Um, like there's no such thing, at least I've never seen on the market, cinnamon yogurt. But how many people, I mean, one of the most popular flavors of a way to flavor yogurt on a, on a milk day is to take some fresh cinnamon, a little vanilla, and a little bit of sweetener, mix it up, and make cinnamon yogurt. Again, if somebody wasn't experimenting, would we ever get there? And again, I don't recall ever seeing cinnamon yogurt in the store. It is one of the most popular flavors. Um, when clients try it, if you like cinnamon, it's a really popular thing. And again, you're controlling the sweetener, so it can be much more savory and less sweet. Um, and adding, again, different layers of seasonings. Um, what I recommend, experiment a little. Don't take your whole tub of yogurt and start mixing in flavors that you've never used before. But take a little bit. You know, Take a table, a teaspoon or a tablespoon, and mix in some seasonings and taste it. If it tastes interesting, try a little more. Experiment and find something new that you wouldn't have thought of just by opening up your cabinet or walking into the store and finding some new seasonings that you haven't used. And definitely check the website and spend a little time. It's worth the investment. I always recommend pick five recipes, like spend a little time, and pick five recipes that you haven't tried before and commit to trying them. If you don't like them, okay, you tried something new and fabulous, good for you. You tried something new. But more often than not, if it appealed to you to try, chances, chances are you're really going to enjoy it because you picked it based on some of the spices or core ingredients that you do enjoy. So the bases are there for you to enjoy something. Um, with that said, I want to mention a couple of ingredients that if you don't know to look for them um, can be missed. One of them is something called palmini, P-A-L-M-I-N-I. -I. Those are linguine noodles that are made of heart of palm. Another brand that is making other shapes of pasta like lasagna from heart of palm. Um, and I will say, I am bananas about them. I think they're fabulous um, as part of my maintenance. I use them all the time instead of regular pasta. I have to order them, I'm out. Um, my father had never tried it when I was making a stir fry for myself. And he tried it and he's like, oh my gosh, this is outrageous. And he actually like, this is better than my dinner. And he came over and shared with me. Um, I'm really enjoying them. One of the other things I wanted to mention, which is Singada, I think it's pronounced, I was always saying Singoda, but a new client of mine here um, corrected me and said it's Singada. That's S-I-N-G-O-D-A, and that is flour that is made from water chestnuts. Very important, we know no nuts and seeds on the program, so not chestnut flour, water chestnut flour. It is a common ingredient apparently in India and Pakistan. And um, when I was introduced to it several years ago by an Indian client of mine, um, we started making um, Indian flatbread or pancakes. And then a couple of Indian clients of mine told me, you know, I was making very simplistic that I found on some Indian websites. I looked at quite a few for the recipe. And they told me that, you know, I was going through this whole process of, flattening it out between saran wrap and Ziploc bags and things. And they said, yeah, they make it like a regular batter and they dice up, um, chop up some various veggies very finely and put it right in the batter. And you just pour it into the pan and make it like a pancake. Um, haven't tried it that way yet. I'm still sticking to my uh, plastic bags. But um, I will say it is delicious. And all of our recipes are gluten-free, so that's always a plus if you have a sensitivity. 
and it's something that's legal to use on a veggie day. So now we've got, you know, our Indian flatbread. Um, we've had people make a pie crust. So I think, and I just saw, I wanted to say um, a couple of thank yous. We've got a lot of really interesting recipes. And so um, client Neil has made dumpling soup. So he made dumplings with the singada and a vegetable, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, utapam, which he said is a savory pancake. Um, Zvi sent me some pictures of his vegetable sushi um, using with Bragg's liquid aminos, and it looks phenomenal. And typically when I'm doing vegetable sushi, we're using the nori, but he actually used his, uh, he ordered in with his wife, and they used um, cucumber as the roll, and it looked absolutely delicious. So we'll be sharing those photos, and thank you, Zvi, for sharing. Um, eggplant meatballs with the palmini. Um, CC posted a curry porridge that sounded and looked really interesting. So people are being really creative with their ingredients, and that's so much of the satisfaction, right? This doesn't ever have to be boring. If simple is better for you, some people do want the same things every milk day and the same things every veggie day, and it just keeps the simplicity keeps them focused, and that's fine. But if you're somebody who really thrives on different tastes and having variety, this never has to be boring. We have over 500 recipes, and that is growing every day um, that you can use while on the program. So don't let it get boring if you need that stimulation. And remember, there are anytime treats and experiment with your own zero calorie ingredients. You never know what you're gonna create. Make a variation to something that you've read on our website or a recipe that you've seen, and maybe there's one ingredient that doesn't appeal to you, but you know you enjoy something else, so swap it out and see how it goes. And if it goes well, please share, because if you liked it, a variation technically does become a new recipe. And many others might like it, and why not pay it forward um, and help others succeed as well? So um, that's how it grows. That's how we get creative. And we can really enjoy our food. There's no reason not to. And again, our taste buds have been cleaned off. So we've got the vibrance of color, of taste. We're going to taste those seasonings. We're going to taste those spices. And again, this is an occasion. Salt is a healthy food. It does help us keep hydrated, and it does help us regulate as long as it's not in the extreme, right? Anything in moderation isn't going to hurt from that perspective. And we do highly recommend Himalayan pink salt because of its health benefits and sea salt. Iodized salt, okay, you know, that's where sometimes the this health of salt. But there's so many healthy salts on the market and so many varieties of flavor. Um, I've not tried nearly <laughs> half of them. I was given a gift recently of some herbal salts. I haven't tested them out yet. But, you know, walk into the supermarket these days, there's quite a lot of variety, even in the salt family, um, to make different recipes. Um, I think it's celery salt is how people are making... Um, like the mock celery soup on a dairy day, right? So all those different flavors um, can really make something interesting. And salt, it's 24-7, right? Milk day, veggie day, doesn't matter. So with the variety of some of these flavored salts can make really interesting. Um, and again, anything in a sprinkle. So fresh herbs, fruit and vegetable day, right? A fresh herb is going to fall with your vegetables. But anything dried and that's coming in as a sprinkle, that's allowed every day, anytime. So you can use that and experiment on a dairy day. If it's coming out of a little shaker bottle, when in doubt, do feel free to you know, email or text us a photo of the bottle. And don't forget to send us the nutritional label so we can look at the ingredients. Um, but we're always happy to review products. I will say when in doubt, because this is chemistry, always assume no and let us tell you yes. So when in doubt, err on the side of caution because it is chemistry. And do remember, anything containing vinegar, even if it's zero calorie, in general we want to step away from because vinegar is the one thing that will neutralize the chemistry. 
and you don't want to do all that work and a little bit of vinegar sabotages your week. So that's the one thing I would be extra mindful of always is vinegar content. Um, somebody did ask me sauerkraut. Um, sauerkraut is typically made with brine. Um, so it's cabbage and brine, unlimited. So they asked me, is there a quantity limit? Nope, as long as it's part of your pound and a half, it's unlimited. Um, again, I do want to reiterate, this is about building your own trust with your relationship with food. That's a big part of this journey. Um, so I'm not that big on measuring everything that you're eating. I'm really big on you keeping hydrated. I'm really big on you tasting your food and paying attention. The acupressure is reconnecting your hypothalamus in your stomach, those stretch receptors in your stomach. It does take 20 minutes for the stomach to tell the brain that you're eating. So if you're wolfing down food, you're going too fast, your stomach doesn't have time to send a signal. But your stretch receptors in your stomach and your brain are reconnected. Allow them to be friends. Allow them to talk. When your stomach says you've had enough, you've had enough. And often that's well before your pound and a half. And that's why we do say it's up to a pound and a half. Never force feed yourself if you're not hungry or if you've had enough. You're done. Now, I'll also say personally, I find it really disappointing when my stomach says I've had enough and I'm really enjoying something. So we don't want to walk away from the table with stomach satisfied and this not, because this is the inner child, right? The inner child is like, that's no fun. That's not fair, right? How many kids? How often do you hear? That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Okay, so let's be fair. If you're really enjoying it, Taste and savor an extra bite or two, but pay attention. When you're chewing it, close your eyes, mm, savor it. Be engaged with the food. If you're enjoying it, allow the taste buds to really ah, take in all that flavor. If you bite and swallow, oh, well, that moment is gone. If you're really enjoying it, give the mouth and the brain the satisfaction too. So your stomach says you had enough. So take another bite or two. Take another bite or two. That's not going to sabotage your plan. And if you're on maintenance, that is not going to sabotage your weight maintenance. It's not going to make you regain body fat. So make sure that you've got an overall sense of satisfaction. Stomach, mouth, and mind. Because Think about what happens. How often have you been at a social event where you're out to dinner and sitting in a restaurant and you're eating, you hit the bottom of the plate? When did I eat that? We're absent minded, we're not paying attention. And now what's happening? If we eat everything on our food, chances are our stomach is full. But we weren't listening. So the stomach is going, whoa, whoa, guys, I'm done. Brain, full. Satisfied, full, stop. And what's happening? The brain and the mouth are looking down, going, friend, I don't know what you're talking about because I didn't eat yet, so I'm going to go eat now, okay? And the stomach's going, whoa, 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 whoa. Friend, done, we're done. It's full down here. We're at capacity, don't need anything. And the mouth and the brain are saying, friend, I don't know what you're talking about. You're making up stories. Didn't eat yet, don't have any satisfaction. So getting all of these parts and pieces engaged, the mouth, the taste buds, your brain, your stomach, having them all talk to each other and have an open communication, that's the key to success, not only in this weight loss phase, but long-term maintenance, right? Working on our behaviors. Um, you know, somebody said to me today, it's, takes 21 days to change your habits, right? And I was like, no, not to change your habits. It's actually form a new one. So with three weeks of intentional repeated behavior, and I'm talking about let's pay attention when we're eating. Let's be engaged. If the, if the food crossed our lips, let's actually taste it and enjoy it. Then I mentioned I was at a baby shower on Saturday. And there's some interesting desserts. So, you know, I'm on maintenance. I can have whatever I want. So I was like, okay, let's taste this. 
one of the things was so sweet, I couldn't even finish the one bite. I took a napkin and I spit. I was like, oh, I can't even handle it on my taste buds. If I'm not enjoying it, I don't eat it. But if you're not engaged with the taste, how do you know whether or not you enjoy it? How do you know? Right? How many people are eating dessert? Because it's there and the inner child goes, ooh, dessert. Eat it, eat it, eat it. They never taste it. Right? How do I know I enjoy the palmini? I love that meal. Oh, I sit, I'm engaged, I taste. You know, I really enjoy it. If I'm not enjoying something, I just don't eat it. It's not worth it. Crossing my lips and not enjoying it? No. But I get it. Some people will tell me. Now, I am blessed that the majority of our clients, and I should say we all are blessed, the majority of my clients really do enjoy their milk days. But I have a handful of people who really just don't like dairy. So as I'm telling you, okay, you should only eat what you enjoy. But I do believe that. Then let's find some enhanced flavors. Let's find some seasonings. Let's find the chocolate or the vanilla or the garlic or the cumin or the turmeric. Let's find flavors that you like. And let's find a way to, quote, unquote, if you don't enjoy dairy, let's find a way to doctor it up so that you do. There's always something that we can find to make you enjoy it so that you can savor it, you can enjoy it, and you can move on. Again, for example, the cheese. That's something easy to make. And I, and I mentioned a couple weeks ago, and I do apologize. We didn't publish it yet. The recipe is not really any different than um, what's there now other than the core ingredient is I did make goat cheese. I made goat cheese, same recipe that's online. I made it with goat milk instead of cow's milk. But goat milk is a little more savory. It's a little more tangy than cow's milk. So I got you know some cheese that had some zing to it. Did the same as I did on the recipe that's on the website. I added the Bragg's organic sprinkle and some Himalayan salt, and it was delicious. Now, I happen to love goat cheese. You might not. But I want to reiterate, because I know I mentioned it um, a few weeks ago on our Facebook Live, um, goat milk has essentially the same nutrition as cow's milk, and uh, so it's interchangeable. And for somebody who's lactose intolerant, often goat milk is um, more e easily digested than cow's milk, so it's a nice alternative. And even partly, you know, make some goat cheese, and so you're reducing a little bit of the amount of cow's milk getting into goat milk. Speaking about lactose intolerance, because that has actually come up quite a lot in the past two weeks um, with clients. And this is some clients who've been on the program for a while and maybe didn't discuss it with me or didn't discuss symptoms. But they say, you know what, I never thought I was lactose intolerant, so now nah, it's not a big deal. Or I don't mind the symptoms, so no big deal. Um, First of all, what is lactose intolerance? Our body produces digestive enzymes to break down food. The lactase enzyme is what breaks down lactose. And sometimes our body doesn't produce enough of the enzyme to break down all of the lactose. And lactose is the sugar component of milk. So if your body is not, and by the way, I'm lactose intolerant, and I love dairy, so you find, you use the tools that help you enjoy it. Um, so when your body doesn't produce enough of the lactase enzyme, the body cannot break down the lactose. And then your body's going to reject it because it can't break it down to absorb it. And so typically, gas, bloating, diarrhea, soft stool, um, not pleasant symptoms. Now, some people like, ah, eh, I had the runs, I cleaned out my system, I'll lose more weight. Remember the dairy is a key component of our nutrition. If we are not breaking down the food, we cannot absorb it. If we cannot absorb it, we're not getting the nutrition. So it's really important not to just accept having symptoms, but it's really important to address it. And there's several ways to do this. Number one, you can get lactose-free milk. 
And somebody said to me, but what is lactose-free milk? Is it really milk? Yes. What they did is they take the lactase enzyme, which is the same enzyme your body produces, but it's just not producing enough of it, and they put it directly into the milk, and it breaks down the lactose. So the milk that you're drinking, it's not that there is no lactose. It's already been broken down, so your body doesn't have to do it. So some people actually have told me that they find lactose-free milk a little sweeter than regular milk. Um, there was a period of time where somebody submitted a bunch of recipes and they all said lactose free milk and I published them without saying lactose free milk and she called me up and she's a little pissed off at me and she said I purposely said lactose free milk and I said but not everybody's lactose intolerant and she said I'm not lactose intolerant but lactose free milk is a little sweeter and I think it makes better for my recipes so I always use lactose free milk when I'm using these recipes it's like oh okay so that was interesting right something different. Um, so lactose-free milk, just all it is, is that the lactose has already been broken down. For those of you who don't, or like when you're out, again, I'm lactose intolerant, so I will use lactose-free milk at home. But let's say I run to Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks or my local coffee house and I get myself a latte. They're going to give me whole milk, but they're not going to give me lactose-free milk. So that's when you want to use the lactase enzyme. The most widely known is called lactate. It is the lactate brand. Um, and what this is, is it is the same enzyme that your body makes in a pill. Now, you can buy the lactate brand. It is the same. The generics, um, I will say, I typically buy whatever's on sale. Walgreens, CVS, whatever's on sale. Now. I did speak to the lactate company years ago to talk about how it works, dosage, etc. And what they told me is that when these pills, and by the way, the active ingredient, the active lactase enzyme is in the same, it's the same amount in all of them. So it's, you know, some of the side ingredients might be different, but the active ingredient is the same in the same volume, um, whatever brand you're buying, at least from everything I've seen. Um, I'll say I haven't seen every brand out there, so do feel free to always check. Um, but what they said to me is it was developed under the assumption the average American has 8 to 10 ounces of dairy in a day. So their suggestion was double the dosage. So take two instead of one. So follow the same instructions on the box, which is you don't just take it every day automatically and you don't take it first thing in the morning. You take lactase enzymes when you're going to ingest dairy. This way the enzyme is in your belly at the same time as the dairy and it can go do its job. But the problem is, is if you take one and that's not enough, you're still gonna get some symptoms because the enzyme will break down what it can, but there might be some residual lactose and therefore some residual symptoms. But if you take two, and let's say you really only needed one and a half, lactase can only break down lactose. Can't do anything else can only bring to break down lactose. So if there's any excess enzyme, your body will excrete it the next time you urinate and it'll leave and there's no harm done. So you're better off doubling the dosage to ensure you have enough enzyme and then the body will eliminate any excess enzyme if it's not needed. Now they come in pill form, they come in chewables. For me personally, I find the chewable works better. I have some clients who find that the pills that they swallow work better. So if you're lactose intolerant, you might need to do a bit of experimentation to find out what works best for you. But once you find out what works, now you got a plan. So again, for me, I mix and match. At home, I use lactose-free. When I'm out, I use the lactase enzymes. Um, now, there is a third option if you're lactose intolerant and it's not gelling for you to be using the pills or use lactose-free at home. Then we have the alternative milks. There are, and again, they're not really milk. Obviously, milk comes from an animal. Um, but there are plant-based liquids that can be used as substitutes for the dairy. There are several options. Some of them need supplementation. We don't recommend randomly going out and finding one because, again, often supplementation is required. So if we need some supplementation, we want to make sure that you're getting, and, and supplementation with alternative liquids and alternative milks, I'll call them, um, is really just to ensure proper nutrition. 
Um, so I'm going to give you an example of the reason this is important. Many people who have moved away from dairy in their day-to-day -day lives have moved to almond milk. And so they'll come to say, well, I drink almond milk. An eight-ounce glass of cow's milk, of whole cow's milk, has eight grams of protein. An eight-ounce glass of almond milk has one gram of protein. So on a dairy day, you're getting 20 ounces of dairy. You're getting 20 grams of protein. With almond milk, 20 ounces is giving you two and a half grams of protein. Clearly, there's a big imbalance there. So it's really, really important if you're using an alternative to cows or an I'll say goat milk, because again, goat milk is interchangeable. If you're using an alternative to dairy, it is really important to make sure that you're getting adequate nutrition because part of the health and wellness is, yes, it is an elimination diet. We are taking away many foods to give you fast, healthy weight loss, but the health is because this is nutritionally balanced. Again, there's no ketosis because it's nutritionally balanced. Your body is not going physiologically into starvation mode because it's nutritionally balanced and the intermittent fasting of noon to six, and again, that's specific, not any time intermittent fasting, but noon to six, and the acupressure. So one of the key components of keeping your body healthy and not physiologically in starvation mode is that adequate nutrition. So it's really, really important to make sure that you're getting that nutrition that you need, and when in doubt, ask. Um, but this is one of the reasons when you get to goal and we start reintroducing food that we're able to do so and stabilize your body within three to five pounds of your final weight because there was no physiologic starvation mode, because it's nutritionally balanced, because the chemistry is not reliant on ketosis. We're using a glycolic process. Your body is in fat burning mode through burning glycogen. So it's not a ketogenic program. It's all about the glycogen and the sugars in your body and using those for fuel. So it's balanced, but it becomes unbalanced if your nutrition is unbalanced. So again, when in doubt, always ask any consultant. Um, again, with something like that, in general, the noon to six is important. But if you didn't have a chance to get your food and you're feeling it, eating late one night will not hurt you. On a regular basis, we're creating a pattern, and that pattern will ultimately lead to physiologic starvation mode. But one off, you're better off eating a little bit late if you didn't get your nutrition, especially if you're feeling it. If you get to 7 o'clock and you haven't had all your food and you're not hungry, keep hydrated and you'll be fine until tomorrow. But if you get to seven o'clock and you're in meetings all day and you haven't eaten and you're feeling it, if your blood sugar is a little shaky, you're feeling it, then for one night, eat late. It's not gonna hurt you to eat late once. Again, you don't wanna do so on a regular basis. Um, I think I've covered most of the questions and major topics that have come up in the past week for us. Um, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. Um, next week, I am actually out, so my dad, Dr. Schwartz, will be back, and I'll see you again in two. Your questions and comments are always welcome and appreciated, so keep them coming our way. Um, again, wishing you all the best of health. Summer bodies are built now, so if you're not on the bandwagon, there's no time like the present. Until, for me, two weeks, but until next week from AccuWeight Loss, thank you again for joining us, and have a wonderful week. Have a good night.